放生父，生慈，圣灵的名，阿门。Sentence, por favor. Please be seated. 哎呀，咁多人啊 ！Oh my God, there's so many people here. 欢迎，欢迎。These may have been among the first words that Channing Moore Williams heard as he entered the city of Shanghai, or at least I hope he heard those words. Huan Yang. It means welcome. He was one of several missionaries from the Episcopal Church who went to Asia. The food, the language, the music, everything had a feel well foreign to the Americans who went there. It made me think of that opening line in our psalm today: "Sing to the Lord a new song; sing to the Lord all the whole earth." Certainly, Chan and Moore Williams and the other missionaries had to feel as though. They were indeed strangers in a strange land, singing a new song. Yet, what they were able to do was amazing. Missionaries started out what would become Saint John's University in Shanghai, widely known at the time and in its heyday as the Harvard of China. Holy Trinity Church, Shanghai Sheng San Yi San Yi Tang, still stands and is known as the Red Cathedral. Having been completely restored、uh, by the Chinese government in the last 20 years, Channing Moore Williams was ordained to the priesthood in China, and then he went to Japan. There, he himself started Saint Paul School for Boys, which eventually became Rikyo University in Tokyo. Williams was consecrated Bishop of China and Japan, and eventually. Because of growth in the area, another bishop was appointed to China, and Bishop Williams spent the rest of his life basically living in Japan. My friends in Christ, the Episcopal Church has a long history of missionary work around the world. We have made a lasting impression on those among whom we have served, mostly very, very positive. Not always, but mostly. And my own sense in traveling throughout Asia, seeing the Red Cathedral in Shanghai, visiting Rikyo University, among many other places, is that the seeds the Episcopal Church planted in those places grew in healthy, life-giving ways. I have personally felt that as a bishop, I personally felt that being a bishop, walking through Asia, feeling so welcomed. Feeling so at home, I think the seeds took root well, because the missionaries were able to successfully knit together two important aspects of our Christian faith: the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. Our own Mary Christ has the most powerful way of saying this, as a Native American member of the clergy here in this diocese. She says this in regards to work in other countries, and indeed in this country as well. Mary says, "Quote: The Great Commission to carry the good news of Jesus into the world must always be accompanied by the Great Commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves, in order to avoid genocide. In order to avoid genocide." Because that's exactly what happens if we try to divorce the two from, from each other. You know, what was true for the missionaries is true for us here in the diocese of Los Angeles today. When we open our doors to those whom God has brought among us, when we do so lovingly, living out the Great Commission and the Great Commandment, we too can plant seeds—seeds seeds that are loving. Liberating and life-giving, those are Jesus seeds, and we are called to spread them throughout our communities. Yo sé que es difícil comunicarse en un otro lenguaje. I know it's hard to communicate in another language, but you know what? I don't speak all the languages that are spoken in this diocese. I speak a few, <laughs> but not all. But you know what language I try to speak all the time—the language of love. 
I'm talking about the great commandment kind of love. Sometimes it's difficult. I know that. Sometimes I have to look down at the bottom of the tippy toes of somebody else's feet to see the face of Christ there. And I am often in situations where I don't speak a language or speak it well. And I'm not just talking here about my New Jersey accent. <laughs> you know, language is a funny thing. We can speak the same language but not understand one another. Think about the younger people moving into your neighborhoods, the professionals, the hipsters, the unchurched, those from other countries who speak English perfectly well but their cultural background is important to them. Our religious language can be off-putting to them, or they may just not understand it. That's why the great commandment language is so powerful. A smile, being present, being open, treating someone as you want to be treated. People can hear and understand that language perfectly well. The hard truth here is this. If we don't open our doors wide, allowing the great commandment to fill our hearts and actions, allowing the great commandment to fill us and to live out the great commission, we are going to find ourselves alone in our churches preaching the cobwebs. And I don't know about you, but I did not sign on for cobweb maintenance duty when God called me to this work. So what is it going to take? What is it going to take? We need to stop singing the old song we've sung for decades, and we need to start singing a new song to the Lord. We need to look back at the lives of people such as Channing Moore Williams and look forward in prayer for inspiration in writing this new song, a song that is loving, liberating, and life-giving a song that honors and respects the dignity of every human being, people of color, LGBTQX, conservative, liberal, male, female, young, old, short, tall, and those who are disabled in any way. I'm talking about every human being. That's the song that we need to start singing, that kind of respect a song that especially stops singing about people of color as minorities, but instead sings about who they are, people beloved by God, and a song which honors them for who they are, embraces them for who they are, and loves and cares for them for who they are. A song that stands by them in their struggles and supports them by extending the loving hand of Christ to them, to their families and to their neighbors. And please, Jesus, we must stop singing the song of multicultural ministry as outreach. These are bad words set to a horrible melody. For all this song does is divorce the Great Commission from the Great Commandment, and set up our brothers and sisters in Christ as second-class citizens in our own churches. And by extension, it sets them up as second-class citizens in our communities around us. When we call what we are doing in multicultural settings outreach, we're not living into the dream of God for this world, for this is not the way of Christ, and done in that way, it becomes a unholy work. You know, the truth is, we can write a new song. No, we must write a new song with words that are life-giving, loving, and liberating, and with a tune everyone can sing for all God's children. And when we can sing this new song together in harmony, then not only will we feel a deep revitalization in ourselves, but we will see this revitalization spread throughout our con congregations and our communities 
and we will clean out those cobwebs powered by the great duster in the sky. Or as my sister would say, the super swiffer. <laughs> Friends in Christ, let us sing together this new song, continually knitting together the great commandment with the great commission, speaking God's language, the language of love. Remember, it's a language you don't need a dictionary for because everyone can understand it. And I leave you with a blessing in Korean, which I'll translate after. Sarangwa, Pongwae, Hanunim, Geso, I Saram, Kaunde, Hamke, Gesio, Ide, Abkirul, Indohe, Jusiko, Idere, Maomul, Saranguro, Kusege, Hayo, Jushimyo, Chung Nung Hashin, Hanui Nim, Sung Bua, Sung Jawa, Sung Run, Yorobunege, Gang Boka Soso, which means the God of love and peace be among you and guide you, strengthening you with love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Amen. Doi Tashimashte.